Hey folks, um, going to take a look here at uh, section 6.3. It's um, we're going to call it integral calculus and total accumulation. And the objectives we're going to focus on in this section are uh, well, the first objective, uh, interpreting a total accumulation. Uh, the second objective will be to interpret the area under the graph of a rate function. And then uh, third objective will be to evaluate and interpret the definite integral of a rate function. And the fourth objective is uh, uh, what well, we're going to determine a total displacement. This is like going to be a physics um, application. It's always fun to do a physics application. So here we go. Let's get started. Uh, first off, let's just kind of remember uh, that the definite integral, uh, think back to how we defined the definite integral. Uh, I'd like you to always kind of remember that the definite integral can be thought of as a limit of a sum. Uh, short, sweet phrase. Definite integral is a limit of a sum. Uh, we also saw that we could use a definite integral to represent the area under the graph of a function. Um, now, if you're if your definite integral, if you have the definite integral and the function is a rate of change function, um, sometimes I'll call it just a rate function, but if it's a rate of, of change function, uh, when you evaluate the definite integral, uh, the result is what is known as a continuous sum of a rate function over a closed interval. All right, really fancy language there. Here's what it, to kind of condense it down, uh, what it really means. When you're Computing the definite integral of a rate function, the number you get is going to be a total accumulation. It's going to be a total increase or a total decrease. That's what we mean when we say it's a continuous sum of a rate function over a closed interval. So let's take a look at an example here. Um, a function that models the percentage of households with landlines only is given by uh, f of x equals negative 0.1732x plus 15.694. And that's on the interval 1, uh, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 36. Here, x represents the number of months since 2008, since December 2008. And f of x is the percentage of households with landlines only. And then uh, we're going to do two things here. Part A really old problem, evaluate and interpret f of 36 minus f of 25. Then in part b, we're going to evaluate the definite integral for 25 to 36 of f prime of x dx. So, you know, if you need to, uh, pause, make sure you have the example written down, uh, because it's time for me to uh, head off to the chalkboard and work this example out. Hey folks, here we are, section 6.3. This is the first example. This first example is meant to uh, hopefully illustrate uh, what integration and what we're going to be doing with definite integrals is all about, in particular what happens when we integrate a rate function. So this first example is just, uh, hopefully we're going to see something, we're going to discover something. So hopefully you wrote it down, but the first example said that um, a function that models the percentage of households with landlines only is given by, well, there's the function model. Uh, X is the number of months since December 2008, and F of X is the percentage of households with landlines only. Okay, part A, evaluate and interpret F of 36 minus F of 25. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what 36 corresponds to and what 25 corresponds to. So since X is the number of months since December 2008, I count 36 months from December 2008, and that puts me at December 2011. So 36, I'm just going to make this little note underneath the 36 here. The 36 corresponds to December 2011. The 25, well I count 25 months from, uh, well, December 2008. That puts me at January 2011. So let me just make a little note that 25 corresponds to January 2011. 
All right, so now it's really just a calculator problem, evaluating f of 36 minus the f of 25. So, you know, you put 36 in here for the x, and when I uh, do that on my calculator, when I put 36 in here for the x, uh, 9.4588 comes out. And when I put 25 in for the x, 11.364 comes out. And so when I do the subtraction, I get negative 1.9052. Okay, that's the evaluation. Now, what's the interpretation? Well, let's think here. F of 36. 36 corresponds to December of 2011. So this number here, that should tell me uh, the percentage of households that had landlines only in December of 2011 was 9.4588%. Since 25 corresponds to January of 2011, F of 25 corresponds to, well that's 11.364, that tells me that in January of 2011 the percentage of households that had landlines only was about 11.364%. So when I subtract and I get this number here, that should tell me that from January to December, let me write this down, from January 2011 to December 2011, the total decrease the total decrease in the percentage of houses I'll just, I'm going to do some abbreviation here, folks. And the percentage of households that had landlines only. Oops. With landlines only. Was about uh, 1.9. 1. I'm going to round here to 1.91. It was about 1.91%. First off, notice why I said decrease. It's a negative number. Think about this. In January of 2011, a little over 11% of the households had landlines only. In December of 2011, it was 9.45 households. So you went from 11% down to 9.5%. 9 that's a decrease. So that's why there's a negative sign here. That's why I have the word decrease. And why well, I rounded the percentage. Let's do part B. Let me put a little block here. Now part B, you are asked to evaluate the definite integral from 25 to 36 of f prime of x dx. Okay, here's your function, f of x. So I guess we have to come up with f prime of x. In order to do part B, we're integrating f prime of x. Well, if f of x is this beast here, the derivative, I mean, remember, remember derivative rules, the derivative is just simply negative 0.1732. That's it. So really in part b, you're integrating from 25 to 36, negative 0.1732. You're going to integrate that with respect to x. Negative 0.1732, that's the derivative of the function. That's f prime of x. So now we, we're, we're becoming very proficient at getting antiderivatives. Antiderivative, the antiderivative of that mess is negative 0.1732x. And then we're going to evaluate that from 25 to 36. So you know, fundamental theorem of calculus, the 36 goes in first. So we put uh, 36 in for the x minus, then we put the 25 in for x, and now it's just a simple calculator problem. So I crank that through my calculator. I'm happy to have a calculator. I don't have to do that by hand. Crank it through the calculator, and I get negative 1.9052. It's the exact same number that we came up with in part A. That 
should, that's exactly what I was expecting to get. And that's exactly what we should get. Because look, we did the derivative and we got that. Then we got the antiderivative and I mean it's almost the same function. The only difference between the antiderivative we wrote down and the original function is that constant. Big deal. Big deal. That's the only difference is the constant. So we get the exact same thing. So let's think now about what that means if we got the exact same number. It doesn't say it here in the example. It doesn't ask you in the example to interpret. But doesn't it make sense that our interpretation would be the exact same interpretation? That when we integrated this rate function, we end up with a total accumulation. And that's what the, the focus, that's what the focus of section 6.3 is. As far as uh, uh, integrating definite integrals, you know, for the rest of the semester. Uh, so this, this example is just meant to illustrate we integrated a derivative. I'm going to call that a rate function here soon. And the number that we got is the same as what we did here. And that the interpretation, the interpretation for part B, if I were to ask for an interpretation, it would look exactly like this. So this was an illustrative example. We're going to head back to some slides now. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about uh, uh, integrating a, a rate function, what the area under the graph of a rate function gives you. And um, then I'm sure we'll do an example. And I'll be back here at the chalkboard. All right, hey, welcome back. Uh, what we saw in that example was that when we evaluated and interpreted the f of 36 minus f of 25 in part A, and we compared that to evaluating the definite integral from 25 to 36 f prime of x dx, we, we got the same numerical result in part A and part B. Um, and that, that was the whole point of that example. It was to illustrate you get the same thing. Uh, so let, let, before we do another example, I just want to kind of get this out here pretty quickly. Um, when you have a rate function, and remember when you have a rate function, you're going to know it's a rate function either by the words it's, it's a rate of change function, or you'll know it's a rate function by the units of the dependent variable. It'll be like dollars per year. It's going to have that kind, those kind of units. The, units we expect to see with a rate function. So if, if function f is a rate function on a closed interval a, b, and, a, and as long as a, b is in the reasonable domain of the function, when we do the area under the graph of a rate function on interval a, b, it gives us a total accumulation. A total accumulation. It gives us a total accumulation of this uppercase f, uh, where uppercase F is an antiderivative of little f. So again, kind of paraphrase all this. When you integrate a rate function, it gives you a total accumulation. In other words, when you integrate a rate function, it gives you a total increase, or it's going to give you a total decrease. And hopefully that first example illuminated that, that concept, illustrated that concept. I do have a couple of notes here, um, just to, I wanted to highlight one more time, that the area under the graph of any function on a, b is given by the definite integral from a to b f of x dx. That's something that we know, but I thought I'd point it out again one more time. And then uh, the second note I have for you is, uh, remember to evaluate the definite integral. We're gonna, we do that by using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So we get an antiderivative, and um, um, evaluate it at B minus evaluating it at A. Um, so just a couple of notes. It's time to check out another example. So you know in that first example that was meant to illustrate something, we were looking at landlines only. So this example is to kind of contrast to uh, the landline example. Um, here the rate of change in the percentage of homes that only have wireless phones. Uh, it can be modeled by the function f of x equals negative 0.0006x plus 0.3834. Note x is between 1 and 37. 
Um, X represents the number of months uh, from December 2008. And F of X represents the rate of change in wireless only households and the units are percent per month. So notice that f of x we have here, it's a rate of change function. We know it's a rate of change function. There are two ways I know it's a rate of change function. Way one is it says f of x represents the rate of change. That tells me it's a rate of change function. The second clue that it's a rate of change function are the units, percent per month. So that means that there's some function out there, I'll call it uppercase F, that this little f here that we see, this rate function, this rate of change function, it's the derivative. We don't need to see the prime notation. I know it's a rate function. I know it's a derivative. So what do we want to do in this example? Let's see, we want to write a definite integral that represents the increase in households that only use wireless phones from January 2011 to December 2011. And we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate that definite integral. So do what you have to do. Pause the video. Write down the example. Whatever it is you need to do, go ahead and do it because I'm heading off the chalkboard to work out this example. All right. Hey, the example we just saw um, was talking about the rate of change in the percentage of homes that only have wireless phones can be modeled by this function. Uh, X represents the number of months uh, from December 2008, and F of X represents the rate of change in wireless only households, and the units are percent per month. So this is a rate of change function. That means it is a derivative. I don't see the prime notation. Don't have to see the prime notation. I know it's a derivative for two reasons. Reason one, it says that it's a rate of change. It says f of x represents the rate of change. Reason two, the units of f of x, percent per month, percent per month. That tells me it's a rate of change. So you're asked to write a definite integral. Uh, in this example, we're asked to write a definite integral that represents the increase in households that only use wireless phones from January 2011 to December 2011, and then we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate. So the first thing I'm going to identify is January 2011. So January 2011, that corresponds to an x value of 25, whereas December 2011, that corresponds to an x value of 36. I mean, I literally, x is the number of months from uh, December 2008. So I just do a little counting. So write a definite integral that represents the increase in households that use, that only use wireless phones. So we're asked to write a definite integral. Definite integral. We're integrating a rate function. That will tell us the total increase or decrease. Integrating a rate function tells you a total increase or a total decrease. So here, the definite integral will be the integral from 25 to 36. This rate function, 0 point, negative 0.0006x plus 0 0.384, or 3834, and we're integrating with respect to x. So now we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate this beastie. So we have to get an antiderivative. So let's see, an antiderivative of that, uh, boy, that's what, negative 0 0.006 times a 1 half x squared plus a 0. 3834, and we'd evaluate that from 25 to 36. And you know what? I'd probably clean this up just a little bit. I'd take the negative 0 0.006 and multiply it by 1 half to give me a negative 0 0.0003x squared plus 0 0.3834 
evaluated from 25 to 36. So now it's fundamental theorem of calculus time. Remember the 36 comes in for the x's first. Um, oops, sorry folks, I left off my x here. And that means I left off my x here. Can't forget the x, the antiderivative of this is 0.3834x. So as I was saying, uh, crank it through the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the 36 comes in for the x, that goes in first. Then the 25 comes in for the x. And when you put the 36 in for the x, you get 13.4136. And then when the 25 comes in for the x's, you get 9.3975. So now we do a simple subtraction. And good grief, we get 4.3975. 0161. That value, that gives us the total increase in households that use, that only use wireless phones from January of 2011 to December of 2011. So I didn't ask you to, to interpret, it, it wasn't asked to interpret here, it was just evaluate and what the definite integral would represent. But I'm just kind of thinking ahead a little bit. If I just ask you to evaluate this and interpret, well, we have the number, so we've evaluated. My interpretation would be the total increase in households that use wireless phones only from January 2011 to December 2011, that total increase was about 4.01 or 4.02 percent. That's it for the example. So to make sure we understand integrating a rate function, it gives us a total accumulation, a total increase or a total decrease. I'd like you all to pause the video and do number nine. Make sure you understand this concept. So go ahead, pause the video, do number nine, and uh, when you've done, after you finish number nine, restart the video, and I'll be here at the chalkboard working out the solution. Hey, I'm here on uh, looking page 4852, looking at the directions for number nine, and part A it says write a definite integral to determine the shaded area, and then part B it says evaluate the definite integral from part A and interpret the result. So kind of a neat thing here is there's a graph given, so I'm just looking at the graph. And I'm looking at the graph and I see uh, uh, there's a shaded region there. It looks like it's shaded between the T values of 5 and 10. Um, T represents the number of weeks of the double D COLA ad campaign. And it looks like my vertical axis is uh, the rate of change in sales in thousands of dollars per week. So I know, I know the graph I see in number nine, uh, that R of T, I know that's a rate of change function. I know it's a derivative. I know that because it says rate of change in sales. It also says the units are thousands of dollars per week. So to do number nine, it looks like all we have to do is integrate from five to 10 negative 1.02t plus 20.2 dt. Now let me make sure we've done part A. Oh, that's it. That's it for part A. Part B, part B is uh, evaluate this definite integral, and well, then we're going to interpret. So to evaluate the definite integral, we need to come up with an antiderivative. So let's see the antiderivative of this. Uh, see power rule, so that would be a t squared. Uh, a one half would come out front, so negative 1.02 times one half is negative 0 0.51. Uh, antiderivative of that term is a 20.2t. We need to evaluate that from 5 to 10. So the fundamental theorem of calculus says the 10 comes in first. And when the 10 goes in first, you put a 10 in here, a 10 in there, you get 151. Okay, minus 
90 times the 5's then, and uh, 88.25 comes out. So 151 minus 88.25 gives us 62.75. So we have evaluated the definite integral. We have evaluated this definite integral. We found a number that is the area under the rate of change curve. So it's a total accumulation. Since it's positive, that accumulation would be an increase. So I think I'm ready to try to write down what this interpretation is. I'm going to come over here and write down the interpretation. Since it's positive, I'll start off with the total increase. That's the total increase in sales from five, it's five to ten weeks. That's what the uh, limits of integration are, five to ten of the, um, uh, well, the, the double D cola, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use DD for double D, of the double D cola ad campaign the total increase in sales was about all right, so now this number comes into play the game. Now remember the units of the rate of change function, the units is given by the vertical axis. The units were thousands of dollars per week. So that means this is in thousands of dollars. So I'm going to write that as just simply $62,750. So the total increase in sales from the 5th to 10th week of uh, the du Double D Cola ad campaign, the total increase in sales was about $62,750. When you integrate a rate function, you get a total accumulation, a total increase or a total decrease. Positive, total increase. So let's head on back to the slides. Um, you know what, we're going to head back to slides, we're going to do another example. So let's go look at the example, and then we'll come back here, and I'll work out the example on the old chalkboard. All right, hey folks, in that last example, um, you know, hopefully we, we, we understood the example, and you did number nine, and hopefully you understood number nine. Um, here on this next example, I already have it up here for us. We're given the rate of change in the gross domestic expenditure on research and development in the United States can be modeled by uh, f of x equals negative 1,092 x squared plus 12,104.2 x minus 10,108. And here x represents the number of years since 2000, and f of x is the amount spent um, in millions of dollars per year. Again, I know f of x Right now, I know f of x is a rate function. I know it's a rate function because it says the rate of change in, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then look at the units for f of x. Millions of dollars per year. Two reasons. I know it's a rate function. So it says determine the area of the shaded region and interpret this area as a total accumulation. All right, well, here's the graph. So there's the graph of the rate function. And um, I see the shaded region. So, you know, we're going to find the area of that shaded region. And we're going to interpret it as a total accumulation. It's going to be interpreted as a total increase or a total decrease. So before I head off to the chalkboard to work it out, um, besides making sure that you have this all written down, I do want to point out that um, it looks to me like my limits of integration are going to be a lower limit of 4 and an upper limit of 8. So hopefully you have it written down because um, I'm going to head off to the chalkboard and I'm going to going to work through this example. All right, hopefully you wrote down the example on the slide. Um, uh, it said the rate of change in gross domestic expenditure on research and development in the United States on a per year basis can be modeled by that function. 
x is the number of years since 2000 and f of x is the amount spent in millions of dollars per year. So this is a, this is a rate of change function. It's the derivative of some function. Uh, you, you saw a graph there and it said determine the area of the shaded region and interpret this area as a total accumulation. So when I looked at the graph, I looked at the graph of the shaded region, it looked like it was uh, bounded on the left by an x value of 4 and uh, bounded on the right by an x value of 8. So it looks like a definite integral that represents the shaded region is the integral from 4 to 8, negative 1,092x squared plus 12,104.2x minus 10,108. Alright, so now to find the area of that shaded region, all we have to do is come up with an antiderivative here and then crank it through the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the antiderivative here, see power rule, I add 1 to the exponent, which make that a 3, put a 1 third out front, so negative 1,092 times 1 third, that gives me negative 364x cubed plus... Uh, same process here, add 1 to the exponent, so that becomes x squared, 1 half out front, gets multiplied by that mess, so 6052.1x squared, and then finally the antiderivative of the constant term, and there we have the antiderivative. Now we're going to evaluate it from 4 to 8. So we should know by now the fundamental theorem of calculus. The 8 goes in first for the x's. Minus, what do we get when we toss the 4 in for the x's? And if you do it correctly, you get 86,996.8. That's it. 86,996.8. Now it says interpret this as a total accumulation. All right, so here we go. X is the number of years since 2000. So an X value of 4 would match up with 2004. X value of 8 matches up with 2008. So I think I'm on my way to interpreting this from 2004 to 2008. Since this is a positive number, I'm going to say the total increase, positive, it's a total increase in money, and this money was spent on, uh, was spent on uh, research and development, so I'll abbreviate that to R&D. So the total increase in money spent on R&D, research and development, in the United States was about, okay, now what were the units of this? Uh, millions of dollars. So it was about 86,996, and since I have the dollar sign there, I'll just say million. So from 2004 to 2008, the total increase in money spent on research and development in the United States, it was about $86,996 million. Or you could say, if you wanted to get really fancy, you could say um, that it's about 86.996 billion dollars. So you could either say $86,996 million or you could say $86.996 billion. To me, this sounds a little more natural to say $86.9 billion rather than $86.9 or $86,996 million. But either one would be acceptable. Either one's fine, whichever one you're happiest with. So you know what I'd like you to do? I'd like you to pause the video um, and do one more problem here to make sure you're getting this concept. So pause the video. 
and do number 38. And you know the drill. Once you've done number 38, restart the video and I'll be right here at the chalkboard working out the solution and hopefully you have it correct. All right, hey, number 38 said um, that a state experiencing rapid growth is Georgia. And there's a quote here that says Walmart, the State Patrol, new high schools and new homes are being built left and right, said Columbia County Deputy Administrator Scott Johnson. And then there was a graph showing the rate of change in the population of Georgia starting from 2000 and it's projected to 2030. And there's a nice little figure given here so you can see the graph. Um, knowing that the rate function is P of X equals negative 0.001X plus 0.14 and X is on the interval 0 to 30, you're asked to compute the shaded area and interpret. Well, the first thing I notice is the shaded area corresponds to an X values of 15 to 20. So I think I would start off by saying, well, to find the, the shaded area, I'm integrating from 15 to 20. And then the function was negative 0.001x plus 0.14. So no problem. We know how to evaluate a definite integral. We know to get the, the antiderivative. We know the antiderivative is negative 0.0005 x squared plus 0.14x. And then we know to evaluate that from 15 to 20. We're going to crank it through the fundamental theorem of calculus. So the 20 comes in first. We get a number. Then the 15 comes in. Subtract. And you get 0.0. 6125. So we've evaluated, we found the area of the shaded region. We've, we've, we've done that part. So what does that mean? What does that mean? Well, since, let me look real quick here. In 38 cents, it says that X, it looks like X is the number of years since 2000. I'm seeing that from the graph. 15, that would correspond with the year 2015. And the 20 would correspond to the year 2020. So that's a great place to start my interpretation. From 2015 to the year 2020, the population of Georgia population of Georgia is expected to positive number, so it's expected to increase. Or some people would say it's expected to grow, grow, increase, by 0 0.6125, and now the, the units, million, and I guess I'll talk, tack on the word people, a million people. We're not talking about dogs, cats, goldfish, parrots. It's people. I think another way of saying it, instead of saying 0 0.6125 million people, you could just simply say 612,500 people. So... That's what's expected to happen to Georgia from 2015 to 2020. It'll be kind of cool to see if this actually happens. But that's it for number 38. Hopefully you did it, and hopefully it makes sense. So it looks like what I'd like to do is head back to the slides, and um, we'll kind of look at one more example here. So here I go off to the slides, and we're going to look at another example. Then I'll be back here at the chalkboard working it out. All right, hey, uh, we, we worked through that example, and then I asked you all to do um, uh, number 38. Hopefully you got number 38 correct. Hopefully you're feeling pretty good about integrating rate functions and doing the interpretation, seeing how to uh, get the words total increase in there. Um, let's look at another example. In this example, 
the rate of change in the number of intentional homicides uh, per year in the United States can be modeled by the function f of x equals negative 27.2658x squared plus 170.924x minus 63.389. So in this, uh, uh, for this function, x is the number of years since 2000, and f of x is the rate and change of the number of homicides per year. And notice the, the model's valid uh, on the interval 0 to 10. So evaluate uh, the following integrals and interpret. So there are two parts here. Part A, we're going to evaluate the uh, integral from 2 to 5, f of x dx. And in part B, we're going to integrate uh, uh, the integral from 6 to 8, f of x dx. Before I head off to the chalkboard, you know, let's mention one more time. I know function f here is a rate of change function. I know it's a rate of change function because it says the rate of change in the number, blah, blah, blah. It says rate of change. I also know it's a rate of change function by the units. It says f of x is number of homicides per year. Homicides per year. That's a rate. Um, so I know in part A and in part B, I know when I uh, you know do the interpretation here, you know that it's giving me a total accumulation. It's giving me either a total increase or a total decrease in the number of homicides. Hopefully you have this written down because now it's time to head off to the chalkboard and work through this example. Hey folks, the example we just saw, it said the rate of change and the number of intentional homicides per year in the United States can be modeled by this function. X is the number of years since 2000 and F of X is the rate and change in the number of homicides and we're, this is valid on the year 0 to 10 or the interval 0 to 10. So said evaluate the following integrals and interpret. So part A, you were asked to evaluate the definite integral from 2 to 5, f of x dx. That's the integral from 2 to 5, negative 27.2658x squared plus 170.924x minus 63.389. So evaluate that beastie and interpret. Well, let's get an antiderivative. So by now, hopefully, you know, you're very dialed in with the power rule. Increase that by one, put the one-third out front. So I'm just going to write down the antiderivative. It's negative 9.0886x cubed. Here, that exponent would become a two. One-half comes out. Gives you an 85.4. 62x squared minus 63.389 and x. And we're evaluating that from 2 to 5. So fundamental theorem of calculus time. You know the 5 goes in for the x minus, then you toss the 2 in for the x, and you get this number, 541.1688. I don't know, what in the world does that number mean? Well, x is the number of years since 2000, so it's from 2002 to 2005. Great place to start the interpretation. From 2002 to 2005, see that's a positive number, so I kind of am expecting to use the words total increase, positive, so I use the word increase. So the total increase in the number of intentional homicides was about, okay, and since we'd be talking about people here, I'm just going to round it to the nearest whole number. So it's about 541. So it's total increase. Obviously I don't have room up here to do part B, so I'm going to have to erase the board. So while I'm erasing the board, you can interject uh, you know, your favorite erasing music, whatever that might be.
Alright, part B, you're asked to evaluate and interpret the definite integral from 6 to 8, f of x dx. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all the same steps I did in part A. In other words, this same function will come here. I'm going to get the same antiderivative. It has to be the same antiderivative. I mean, it's the same function. I have to get the same antiderivative. It's just on that antiderivative, I now am cranking different numbers through the fundamental theorem of calculus. The 8 would go in first, then minus the 6 going in. So I'm just going to write down... I'm not going to write all that other stuff down. You should get this number. Negative 424.0676. The interpretation. 6 would correspond to 2006. 8 would correspond to 2008. So from 2006 to 2008, the total negative number here. What word do you think I'm going to use? That's right. Decrease. The total decrease in the number of homicides was about, and again, since we're talking about people, I'll round it to the nearest whole number was about 424. So I really wanted to look at this example because uh, every example we had done so far, when we were integrating the rate function, uh, we were seeing it was a total increase, a total increase. And I wanted to do this because part B, we actually get a negative value, and that corresponds with a total decrease. So, ah, you know what, we're going to head back to the slides. One more example, um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll pretty much be done with this section. So let's head back to the slides and look at the final example. I'll be back here at the chalkboard to work through it. Hi, right, folks. Um, uh, final objective we're going to look at here is determining a total displacement. This is just like a classic example. This is uh, um, one from the wonderful world of physics. I feel obligated to do, you know, at least one physics example. Um, so let's see, uh, you have a position function called S. Uh, remember the velocity is going to be the derivative of the position function. So velocity function V of T is nothing more than the derivative of the position function. So when we want to determine the total movement, in physics they call that the displacement of an object, we can use the definite integral along with um, you know, our, our fundamental theorem of calculus. Again, we can determine the total movement or displacement of an object by integrating a rate function. So let's look at this example. Say we know the velocity of an object is given by V of t equals 12t plus 6, and uh, t is measured in seconds, and V of t is the velocity measured in meters per second. Again, we know V of t is a rate function meters per second. I'm going to do two things here. In part A, let's evaluate V of 6 and interpret. And in part B, let's determine the displacement of the object uh, between 3 and 9 seconds. So basically from 3 seconds to 9 seconds, you know, how far did the object travel? Um, so I hope you have this example written down because we're going to uh, head off to the chalkboard and crank through this example. Hey folks, this final example, um, it's just a basic example from physics. It's always kind of neat to do um, a physics example. So in the example, you were told that the velocity of an object is given by V of t equals 12t plus 6. t is time in seconds, and V of t is the velocity, and it's measured in meters per second. Part A, you're just asked to find the V of 6, so evaluate V of 6 and interpret. So V of 6 I mean, I just put 6 in for the t, so 12 times 6 is 72, plus 6 is 78, so v of 6 is 78. So interpret. What does that mean? Well, t is seconds, so that just means after 6 seconds, whatever this object is, um, the velocity of the object 
is 78 meters per second. So that's it for, for part A. Now part B says, determine the displacement of the object between 3 and 9 seconds. So displacement, well, you know, that, that, that's kind of like a, a, the total accumulation concept. Except in physics, they call it displacement. Basically, all you have to do in part B is integrate from 3 to 9 V of T. It's going to tell you the total distance that this object has moved. So, we integrate from 3 to 9 the 12 T plus 6 DT and we get an antiderivative, very friendly antiderivative of 6T squared plus a 6T evaluated from 3 to 9. You know, fundamental theorem of calculus, 9 comes in, you get a number, minus, toss the 3 in, I get 468. So that's the total displacement from 3 to 9 seconds. Or maybe a better way to write it is that from 3 to 9 seconds, rather than just say total displacement, we could say from 3 to 9 seconds, the total distance that this object has traveled is 468 meters. Yeah, that's what total displacement means. You know, I'm going to have you do a homework problem. I don't know, one, maybe two. I forget how many uh, that I assign. That are these physics type examples. Um, I think you'll be fine with them. But that's it for section 6.3, uh, integral calculus and total accumulation. Uh, keep, just keep some basic things in mind. When you integrate a rate function, you are getting a total accumulation. That's a total increase or it's a total decrease. When you integrate a rate function, you crank through the fundamental theorem of calculus and you get a positive number, that tells you it's a total increase. If you get a negative number, that tells you it's a total decrease. So hopefully things are making sense here. Hopefully you're seeing the, some of the power now of integral calculus. Uh, and this is just the beginnings of uh, the power of integral calculus. We're going to see a lot more power of integration over the next few weeks. So, um, you know, that's it for 6.3. Go ahead and crank through the homework. And um, hopefully uh, you have fine, fine time doing the homework. Thanks for watching.